together the call to worship. There is but one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Okay, the first um, song on your sheet is right here called Ha Hakima. Actually, it's Hu Hakima. There's a typo there. It should say Hu Hakima. Well, the name of it is Hakima, and then the chant underneath is right. It says Hu Hakima. And then the second part of the chant is Wa Tamima. So the first part means be wise. And the second part means move toward your goal with wholehearted passion. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a nice chant? Yeah. And the language is Aramaic, which is the language that Jesus spoke. So I'm, I'm going to play my guitar on this one, and then later I'm going to play my drum on another one. So, it's a call and response, so I'll sing the first line and then you, you echo, and then I'll sing the second line and you echo. Okay? And as we sing, think about the meaning of the chant. <laughs>
Mm. Very nice. I love it. Thank you. What language is that in? Aramaic. Aramaic. The language that Jesus spoke, which is our topic today. Oh. Any you have announcements to share? I'll start. I have one. It's on your paper. Hmm? My uh, expressing, drumming, and chanting class that I teach is starting up again. I've been taking a break. So I'm excited to get it going again, starting this Saturday at 3 o'clock. So I hope some of you can join us. We'll do chants like the one we just did. Um, I teach you how to play a djembe like this, so you can you can drum along, sing along. It's pretty freestyle, but I do teach specific songs and chants. And then at the end, we do an improvisation, which is very freestyle, the vocal toning, which is just making sounds instead of mm. words while we're drumming. And so that's like the last part of class, like maybe whatever time we have left after I teach a couple songs. So it could be like the last 15 minutes is the um, improvisational mm -hmm. music meditation, I like to call it. Mm -hmm. So that's my favorite part of the class. Do you bring your own drum or do I, you have drums? Um, I have plenty of extras like this if you want to borrow one. Yeah, or you can bring one if you have one. Okay. And other kinds of drums are welcome too. This is my favorite style of drum. It's called djembe. And where's your house? Um, 12 Timberland Drive, but uh, I didn't put the specific address on there because I want people to pre-register. Okay. So just send me an email, send it to the address. Uh, address Do you and have your email address? That way, if only like one or two people pre-register, I've been able to cancel the class. So I want to kind of get a head count. Mm -hmm. Or if we have too many, which would be nice. Um, my, we do it in my house, so I'm thinking around 10 people is the ideal mm -hmm. number. Right. For that and drum, and for I've that. done it with her. And it was amazing because I actually felt, I, I know this is funny, but I felt very professional with her because she was very patient. Mm -hmm. And she got a lot out of us, I thought, for even her, just the one session even, you know, I learned a lot. I tend to teach a lot in, in an hour, mm -hmm. an hour and a half the classes, mm -hmm. um, because I want, I don't know if, if you're coming back or not, so I want to give you as much as mm -hmm. I can during that hour mm -hmm. and a half. And the second half is play, though. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, I've been told that I, and I kind of have high expectations. If someone says I've never drummed before, that's okay. I teach, I teach you how to read the music. I, it's very simple. And I'll put the rhythms up here. It'll, you know, they'll say like, goon means bass. So I'll write goon up there. So it's, it's, you know, it's very doable for anybody, even if you don't have musical talent. So when we did the solstice party with Vera, um, we had drums, and I was like, I thought I did really well, like, because I would remember your steps, one, two, three, and I remembered yeah. how to do the steps, and, and it was great. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you for, for uh, saying that, yeah. you know, because I don't want to have to cancel it if only one person signs up, so that's why I'm, I'm really starting to promote it now, so thanks for mm -hmm. saying that, Sherry, because you, yeah. you've attended, and you so you know firsthand what it's mm -hmm. like. Is it weekly or mm -hmm. monthly? No, it's twice a month. Okay. It's the second and fourth Saturdays okay. afternoons. So, second and fourth of each month. So to pre-register, what do we have to do? Just send me an email and say I'd like to come. I'm planning to come. Okay, that's, we need a copy of the email. Do. It's not, is it um, on? Is it on here anywhere? No, I forgot to put that on there. But um, yeah, we'll need can, that. Can I Facebook message you? you can, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to put it on the tape also. Yeah. Well, you know, my name is is on the sheet, right? So my email is just my name at Gmail. Rose so it's Rose Husted. Rose Husted at Gmail. So here's Rose Husted right here. Right. Okay. Right there. At Gmail. Dot com. Okay. There's the name. Okay. So it's pretty and... easy to remember. So just tell me you're planning to come. If you change your mind, just a second. If okay. And you can't make it, just let me know so I can keep the head count going. But there's no commitment or anything like that, okay? All so right. If anyone's going, I would like to go up with you with a ride. Oh, you're looking for to catch a ride because it is up on the top of a hill. And you said your car has trouble going It's a hill. 2004. She doesn't have any pep. <laughs> your car doesn't have any pep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uphill. It's not good. Well, yeah. we, could, we could find a couple of guys to push you up, you know? <laughs> don't have a voice today, but, um, um, yeah, I would also like to say it's one of the most beautiful and, like, love-filled houses that I've ever been in in my life. Oh, oh and this so, is my wife, Sarah, so she's yeah. responsible for the love in the house. Totally. <laughs> 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 well, okay, she's 50% responsible for the love in the house, but when you walk in, people 
people have said that, that they just feel good immediately. It's just mm -hmm. good energy in the house. Yes, because yes, it's beautiful. It's amazing. just us and our cats, so we don't have any kids to fight with. <laughs> so it's very good energy in the house. And it was like a really great combination of um, it's focused and then relaxed, which I thought was really neat. Like you focus mm -hmm. on the patterns. But then as you get into it, you start to relax. I mean, the last piece of it is super relaxing no. where you're just doing mm -hmm. improv and stuff. So oh. it was a neat blend. Yeah, I can't from say all those things. Thank you for saying that. I agree. Any other announcements? <coughs> board meeting. <coughs> board meeting after church today. <coughs> board meeting after. today after church. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, everyone's welcome. And please, please come. Yes. It'll be sh it'll be short. I don't really get lonely, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it'll be short. Usually we're short, uh, maybe a half hour or less, and uh, you can bring feedback or suggestions or ideas, um, complaints, anything you want to the board meeting. And I wanted to say also, uh, I guess next week we have uh, Jamie Walters. She will be the speaker next week, Jane I believe Walters. so, yeah, next yes, week. sponsoring the coffee hour <clears throat> next week. And we have the coffee hour to sponsor next week. Yeah, bring some snacks for the parlor, which starts from 11 to 11.45. And what else? We have also, I just learned about a great dance class from Judy. It's um, called Nia, N-I-A, and I, it's Maria, and I don't know if she pronounces her last name, Gelnet or Gelnet. Some of you might know her. She lives in Shenango Forks. And it's a combination of um, modern dance, yoga, and martial arts. And oh. it's, it uses 52 moves. Mm. And you start out very slowly, and then you move up, and so you're moving your heart rate and everything. But it's very supportive, very empowering, uh, very loving. And uh, today we're doing one called Healing. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, really um, special. And it, it's at and the Dance today. Connection. Nice. Yeah, Sunday's at 1.30, so it follows this. And it's um, $5. It's like the best hour mm. for 5 bucks that you know. So I've been doing it off and on. I just started mm. getting back to it. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, I plan to go. I'd like to go, yeah, and try yeah. it out. Yeah. That sounds really nice. Okay, any other announcements? We are the 19th and speaker will be. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, how far away is this? From here. Do you know, this? Do you know where the line is on the next one? Okay, we'll let you sign up. And it'll be on the email. If you're not on the email list, please sign up for Unity because then you can find out who the upcoming speaker is each week and other announcements and important. There's also information about Unity, our beliefs, and things like that. Okay, Jamie. Jamie. Jamie is next. Two Sundays in a row. Oh, okay. Jamie Walters for the next two Sundays. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. And then Jerry the last week. And then Jerry the following week after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that? Any other announcements? Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> yes. Yes. I, back here on the table is an address book. You know, like people used to use. <laughs> well, you write in your real address? Yeah, you write in your, your real mailing address. address. Okay. Snail exactly. mail? Yeah. So um, I'd like to circulate that and have everyone add to it, please, so that we have something tangible, you know, when we... In case... Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always a good way. We can always mail you um, a letter if we want to, or yeah. a card. Yeah. Uh, Birthday card? Yeah. 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 It's nice yeah. to get something in the mail that like that is not... Yeah. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, next is our new member welcome. So let's say this together. Um, we don't, I don't see any brand new faces, but we're going to say this anyway. So we can send the energy out to bring in new people. Say together, we, we open our, our hearts, hearts and doors to new individuals, individuals and families. We know, we know that, that the right, right and perfect people are joining, joining us in the right and perfect time. time. Amen. Amen. Time to greet you, neighbor. I want to share a special unit to moment, something that's happened probably in the past week or so that really touched your heart. Sherry. Um, well, it was really interesting because um, I lost two of my friends, a husband and wife, and each within a few months. And so I adopted their daughter in a way and their son. 
and their daughter went out with me. I, they asked me to chaperone her and some girls for New Year's Eve. So I did that. We had a great time. But the first place we stopped was a place where her father and I would dance. And her mom didn't dance so much, so she said, oh, you go out with Sherry. And, and we danced. And so it was memories. I'm with his daughter. And we were um, talking about that fondly, about her dad. Um, and so the next day, um, we had a song that, he, that we would play. And it was our song. And it's September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not so much the words, although the words are, are pretty and, and beautiful. But it was the, um, the melody and the beat. And we really could dance to that song. And so that was our song. And that is the very first song I went, that I, it's the very first thing I heard even in the morning um, that I paid any attention to. I hadn't had any music. And I went with a friend. And he had that. And it just started. And we were just bebopping in the car. Mm -hmm. So here I was last night with her. Her, his daughter, and then in the morning, the very first thing I heard for 2020 was September, and I just, wow. I was just so touching. Mm. And do you know, just to add to that, I was watching the CBS Sunday News this morning, and they always have a life well lived. No, it wasn't CBS, it was NBC, anyhow. Mm -hmm. And they have a life well lived that they talk about, and the person who wrote that song just died. Oh, is it right? Oh. And I don't know what day, but just within the last oh few days. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I just and got well, chills and, on that one. Yes, and not yeah. only that, but when we went to the mall to walk that day with my friend, the uh, very first CD I picked up was Earth, Wind, and Fire with September on it. I, just, mm. I was looking at the CDs, and that's the very thing. I, and I go, oh, my gosh. It's, it's, what coincidence. Huh? Mm. Hi, Mike. Any other special unity moments? Yeah. yeah, there's so many coincidences, you know, they happen all the time. So for me, it's always um, meaning that we're connected to the divine. And the divine energy is always present. And all our connections are just flowing from that divine field. So uh, I just wanted to share that this morning I had this lovely dream uh, with my mother in it. And my mother mm -hmm. passed about uh, in 2000, I believe. So what is that, 19 years, 20 years almost. And uh, she came in the dream, and it was so vivid. I love my vivid dreams. Mm -hmm. And she came in, and she, like, knocked on the door. And I opened the door, and there she was. And I said, oh, yeah. I was so happy to see her. And I said, come on in, come on in, and, and join us, and join us. And she said, I escaped. <laughs> <laughs> She, I she said, I escaped. From Earth, maybe, to heaven. <laughs> I know, so I don't know how to interpret it. It could be I escaped from heaven or from the other dimension. <laughs> She's having a good time. Yeah, yeah, she said. I think she meant that in a very fun, fun way that she's escaped heaven for a second to visit you. She right, that's through. what it sounded yeah, like. I escaped mm -hmm. to visit you, and I said, "Well, come and stay with us. Come in right now, because I was there with. Um, uh -huh. I'm trying to think. There were other people with me, other family members, but I'm not clear who, whether it's my kids or what. And it was so wonderful just to have her there mm -hmm. for whatever it was, a few minutes before I woke up. And I That's said, beautiful. and it was such a wonderful visit, you know, that she does that every now and then I have like a visit and it, mm -hmm. it was like so moving <laughs> to experience her again. So that to me is a blessing. You know? mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. So we're going to have a blessing of prayer requests. Um, we have papers and pencils in the back if you want to write down a prayer and you can pray upon it for 30 days. Not, not just us, but it goes out to Kansas, I believe. Silent Unity. Silent Unity. Silent Unity. Silent Unity. Unity Village. In Kansas. Missouri. Missouri. It's so, like the Wizard of Oz out there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, and other people that we don't even know pray on it. Isn't that special? Yeah. Kansas. So, let's say our blessing together. God's all in us. love is doing his perfect work in and through us. Moses is established in every area of our lives, and so it is. So Jerry's going to read our daily word. You want to come up front? I can move that chair. That's all right. My intentions set the course for an amazing day. What the day? No. That's right. <laughs> Today is Sunday, January 5th. 
I give my mind and body permission to re rest and relax. <clears throat> For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. While these words of scripture were written long ago, they accurately describe the fanatic swarming pace of life so many people find themselves experiencing today. The invitation from Jesus to visit a deserted place of rest speaks directly to my soul. While I may not be at an ocean shore or on a forest or mountaintop, I can go to a deserted place that is always available to me. At first, dedication and practice are needed to journey inward and find my way to silent and peace. I learn to stop and give my mind and body permission to relax. I come to know relaxing is worthy of my time, vital for my self-care, and essential for my personal and spiritual growth. Familiar quote from Psalms 23, verses 2 and 3, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. Mm. Thank you. That's nice. Guided meditation with you. We're going to use the same chant that we sang at the beginning of today, Hu Hakima and Wa Tamima, which means be wise and move towards your goal with passion and a whole heart. So get yourself in a comfortable position. Um, When you hear me say hu ha kima, with a whisper, please echo hu ha kima. So breathe slowly and deeply. Take a deep breath and feel your body expanding with love. Feel a sense of respect for all that is. And continue to breathe slowly and deeply at your own pace. Embody holy wisdom by embracing all of the voices within you. Whisper, hu ha kima. Hu ha kima. Hu ha kima. Hu ha kima. Be wise. Embrace all the voices within you. Now feel wisdom's passion and whisper, wa ta mima. Whisper, wa ta mima. See yourself moving clearly toward a goal. Feel yourself gliding effortlessly, like a bird flying through the sky. Open your wings wholeheartedly. You are ready, and you are already at one with your goal. Wa ta mima. Amen. I feel chills. I don't know about you. <laughs> okay, so I originally, if you got the email, you know I was going to call my talk um, Cut Out the Middleman. Mm. That's what I put in the email. But I changed it yesterday to Cut Through the Red Tape. It's more appropriate and it sounds better. Um, and you'll understand as I go through the, the lesson today. So, um, obviously the word man kind of threw me off from the beginning on that one, but, so I think that's why I was sort of looking for an alternative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I looked up the definition of this saying, and it says, to get around something by artful maneuvering, <coughs> I like that, I'm very artistic, so that, this, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta print this out. Artful maneuvering in order to accomplish a goal. So that's how you cut through red tape. Cut cut through the red tape, right? And so the reason this applies to the talk today is because Aramaic was the language that Jesus spoke, yet it's been translated through sometimes Hebrew, Greek, Latin, before it came to English, right? So can you imagine how the meanings have been changed? Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, that telephone game where you mm -hmm. you whisper something to someone in yeah. a sentence and they say it to the next person and it might be pretty much right the first time, but then when the next person says it to the third person, it's already off and different, 
and then it goes to the fourth person, it's a totally different message, right? And I think that's what happened with the Bible translations. So Neil Douglas Klotz has written probably 20 books now. He's still alive. I have three of them. <laughs> that, that's, today's talk is inspired by these books. And also the song that I'm going to sing in a minute is also inspired by this topic. And, um, oh boy, we, we, this is the chant that we did. In case you can't see the small print, it says, Be wise, move with wholehearted passion. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn this over so you can see what I did on this side. Um, this is the song. I decided that I changed the name of the song, too. Now it's called Pray in This Way, because I learned that in the Bible it says something. There's different versions of that phrase, but right before the Lord's Prayer, or um, the Beatitudes, actually, it says, well, yeah, the Lord's Prayer says pray in this way, right? And then he's, he's speaking to his disciples on how to pray. And um, so the song that I'm going to sing is the first line of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father Who Art in Heaven. Um, you'll see on the back of your papers, the traditional um, translation is at the bottom, Our Father Which Art in Heaven, Hallowed Be Thy Name, Thy Kingdom Come, Thy Will Be Done, as if it is in heaven. We all have it memorized, most of us anyway. Yeah. Thy Kingdom Come, Thy Will Be Done, as if, you know. Mm -hmm. I just kept, so that translation is not what I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing the Aramaic translations, mm -hmm. which is above that. Okay, but I put that there just to remind them of where it's coming from and what it's based on. It's actually not coming from that. It's coming from the original, the Aramaic. It's not going through all those Greek, this and that, another thing before it gets to English, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a much different translation, is what you see at the top of that page, what I'm going to sing. And in order to get that version, mm -hmm. I didn't find that version in this book exactly. I had to flip through a lot of pages because, like, just for one line, Our Father Who Art in Heaven has, like, seven different ways you could translate it. Mm -hmm. So he has a whole page on Our Father Who Art in Heaven. So I picked one or two of those choices for my song. And then I went to the next, the next line, next page, and you say I put a little green dot... Those are the two I put in the song. These these are similar but different translations mm -hmm. that I could have chosen. But it's Aramaic, and why so many different um, versions? Aramaic is different than English because it it's it does have many. One word could have many different layers of meaning, different meanings, much more so mm -hmm. than English. English does that sometimes too. You can go in the dictionary and see three different definitions for the same word. But in Aramaic, you might get seven different definitions for the same word. Mm -hmm. You know, like breath, wind. The same word, ruha, means breath. It also means wind in uh -huh. Aramaic. Uh -huh. It also means spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, and air. The air in this room is a little different than breath, but if you, but there's definitely a connection because we're all breathing the same air. So Aramaic was in what country that we're talking well, about? Well, in the Middle East where Jesus was. Mm -hmm. speak, that was his language that he spoke. Mm -hmm. yes. Most uh, ancient languages are that colorful, the, the depth of the languages, much more than our English. Yes, and so this, when you yeah. read his translations, it's like reading a poem. Like they're very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Of course, the miracles will teach that words are but symbols. Mm -hmm. mm. And yeah, yeah. There's always a symbolic definition behind every word. So he didn't speak Hebrew then? No. Which is kind of interesting, yeah. I wonder why. I mean, he's a, he's a Hebrew, supposedly. This, uh, I put this together this morning to symbolize cutting through the red tape, which was, remember, on the, the name of the top. And then, so I found out this morning what, where that came from. And it, it used to be that documents were wrapped up like this, legal documents, important spiritual documents. They probably wrote it with an ink pen on a piece of paper like this and then rolled it up, took a piece of red ribbon and wrapped it around it. So cutting through the red tape is being able to just get to, get to the heart of it without you know, too much trouble. 
without it being bound up like this. You, can't, you, you don't know what this says, right? But if you get rid of the red tape, you, you can read it. So I thought that was a very good analogy for with the Aramaic, being able to get to the heart of the Aramaic without having to figure out what the Greeks were trying to say, right? Okay. So, because in, in Greek, they, they like to separate everything into feminine and masculine, and Aramaic didn't do that. You know? uh, our father was not, it was originally meant birther. Is that a masculine word? No. <laughs> birther, the mother gives birth. Right, right. Oh. So the song starts out, O birther, mm. instead of our father. Hmm. Maybe they're sort of non gender centric people or language. I'm yes, wondering. some languages I read are um, neutral. Neutral, yeah. And the Aramaic is neutral? Is it actually neutral? Well, and some words are neutral, some are feminine. Okay. And so if you really, you know, Neville Skotsky is really into it, he'll say which words in which language are neutral. In this language, this word is neutral. In this, in this language, it's feminine. Mm -hmm. In Greek, it's masculine, the word father. Hmm. In Aramaic, it's feminine. But in Hebrew, it's neutral. Uh -huh. oh. So it gets quite complicated. <laughs> yes. So it's interesting. Maybe the concept is that anyone can be a birther. It's not gender specific. And that that concept was even then possibly there. You know, you could be a birther, you could be a male or female. Not to get That's off a good point. But in the <coughs> spirituality of the book I'm reading now, it's the way we look at the world is diametric with this or dichotomy, male or female. Mm. But back in the ancient languages, it's male and female. Mm. That there's male, or there's female in all males. There's males in all females. So it's not really neutral as much as inclusive. Inclusive, yeah. Mm. I see what you mean. So you're saying neutral means neither, but, but both. inclusive means not, both. Not either, so that's even better. But both. Mm. Yes. Mm. Because it does take a male and a female degree to create you know, mm -hmm. it. Right. They both pull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unless you're Wonder Woman. <laughs> so, uh, Which you're not. Right. <laughs> this is one of the lines in the, in the song that I'm going to sing. It says, um, you Focus your light within us, make it useful, is the lyric. But it's based on the original um, Hallowed Be Thy Name. Hallowed, which I didn't, Hallowed Be Thy Name. Like, when I heard that, I really had no idea what that meant. Mm -hmm. But if we, I think it's like hollow. If you think of hollow, your body has an interior that's sort of hollow. Mm -hmm. So it's like focus your light inside inside that hollow space and make mm -hmm. it useful. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Holy. Yeah, nice. Holy. And then another line mm -hmm. in the song says, mm -hmm. don't let surface things delude us, free us from what holds us back. Mm -hmm. And that's based off of lead us not into temptation. Mm. This is so different. Isn't this mm -hmm. good stuff? I'm learning. Yeah. You're learning. I'll retain some of it too. Yeah, yeah. see, I try to keep it's it so simple good. and clear yeah. so that you can yeah. remember it. Thank you. That's how I remember things. So, the name of the song is Pray in This Way. And um, you can sing along. Toward probably at the end, I'll repeat the first two lines again. And that's mm -hmm. where you can sing along because by then you'll have. Feel for the melody. <clears throat> <clears throat>
song was a new and improved version of a song I wrote a long time ago. Ah. It was originally called The Radiant One. And that proves as we get older, we get a lot better. Yes. <laughs> and it's a lot better than the first version. <laughs> and a lot better. So, a long time ago, when I lived in Rochester, probably 20 years ago, I don't, I don't know the number of years, but there was a group called Circle, and we sang a song that he wrote called Abun Mashmaya. And we held, held hands in a circle. And on the first verse, we walked around. We did a great fun. We did a great fun set, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. that. Mm -hmm. That's fun. And so the circle moved around. And then for the second verse, we went towards the center, holding hands and lifting up like this. And it always feels so good to do that. Mm -hmm. And as we're singing the second verse, we come back to the circle. It's a beautiful dance. It's called a circle dance. It's similar to the dances of universal peace that you may be familiar mm -hmm. with. You, okay, I see a lot of heads nodding yes and for mm -hmm. dance. Mm -hmm. So Neil Douglas Klotz was one of the ones who spread the dances of universal peace internationally. I mean, mm. Samuel Lewis um, was uh, the first one, he's on one of the other cards, his name, who originated it. And then Neil Douglas Klotz was the one that spread it and the message out to 25 different countries. Mm. So. There's uh, there's a group in Rochester that does it in Ithaca. Maybe we can get one started here. That would be nice and big. Right, yes, I would like that. Yeah. Um, because when I was in Rochester, they had a drummer, someone playing a drum like this in the center of the circle, and that person uh, needed someone to fill in, so they asked me to fill in, and I did, and so I got to drum in the center, and um, somebody was playing guitar in the center. So it was it was so fun. Afterwards, I got feedback that I, my drumming was a little too elaborate to just keep it simple. <laughs> I have had fun. So um, that was Dances of Universal Peace. So I attended both that and also Circle, which was a similar version of it. And that's where I learned the song of Bunda Mashmaya, which we're going to do in a little while. I'm going to drum on that song in a little after I talk a little bit. So. Um, Let's see what else I want to talk about. I think we need to move this to the next post side. Yes. So you've heard, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. You've heard that quote from the Bible, mm -hmm. from Matthew, Sermon on the Mount. So the Aramaic translation Ripe are those who soften what is rigid, inside and out. They shall be open to receive strength and power, their natural inheritance from nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yes. So, earth, you can see the connection, earth becomes nature. Mm. And you're inheriting strength and power instead of the idea of inheriting the earth, which is kind of how can one person inherit the earth? It, didn't, it never made sense to me. This makes sense to me. And the word meek, I used to think of that as somebody who was quiet, maybe weak, shy. Mm -hmm. But they're the ones who can soften what is rigid. And that's a powerful thing to be able to do. Mm -hmm. It takes power. It takes, you know, wisdom, mm -hmm. intelligence to be able to take a situation or an opinion of someone else who's being rigid, and to be able to change the energy in that room into something softer. Mm -hmm. That's something I try to do every day at work. I have plenty of opportunities. <laughs> People having opinions that are rigid or judgmental or critical. And I always try to say, well, you know, maybe it's not like quite that bad, you know, and I just, maybe it was just, you know, I come up with something for the situation. Give someone the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to, you know, hurt your feelings or whatever it was. Didn't mean to be inconsiderate. They were just doing their thing, right? So that's how I, I go through my day. I, hopefully, I try to, most of the time. Um, so that's what I think of when I say those who can soften what is rigid. It's like being non-judgmental when I really can. That's an important skill, and we can get it by practicing it. It's not like some people have it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. We can all become better each day at that. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the third beatitude. Um, and so the, the word beatitude, I, I thought it meant blessing, which some people would say it means blessing. Because it, it said blessed are the meek, blessed, you know, blessed are the... Mm -hmm. So blissful is actually the Aramaic translation of that word. Mm. Now that's a different... Doesn't blissful sound, yes. feel so much better than blessed? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, it's just, this is really good stuff. I really recommend his books. Um, if anybody wants to borrow one of these, I have three here. Uh, Neil Douglas Klotz. He's, he, he's still alive, so if he's, you know, if you want to attend one of his workshops in California, mm. um, or watch some of his YouTube videos. How do you spell Klotz? K-L-O-T-Z. But Douglas Dash Klotz is his last name. Mm. He's originally from Scotland, I believe. Mm. So, um, let's see. So we, we talked a little bit how um, Aramaic doesn't divide the inner and the outer, the male and the female. Everything's always inner and outer. I mean, not always, but like a lot of things are connected, like breath. We talked about the breath being connected to the air. So mm -hmm. when you hear ruha in Aramaic, it could mean either one or both. So, yeah, it's like a poem. You can interpret it different ways. So, let me flip this over. working just said a blessing comes from without but bliss comes from within mm. yes mm. That's, yeah what a difference. it's a very different way nice yeah words are powerful so the way we choose to interpret mm -hmm. them sure. can make mm. the difference between feeling like this or feeling like this yeah. actually bliss is the experience of oh, recognizing the experience of being blessed once you experience being blessed bliss is bound to follow mm -hmm. And that was one of, um, I was at a Sai Baba's place in the North Carolinas, which is only found by you finding it on your own. Um, mm -hmm. They do not advertise, and I can't give it away where it's at. I found it on my own walking some highways, I'll tell you that, which was interesting. Um, but one of the things that um, he was he taught about the meek. He had actually mentioned that word. For him, um, he was also bringing the meaning that it is to enjoy the simplicity of life, to be meek in that sense, to, to know that that's a blessing, um, to bless everything, the air, the water that you have to shower with, the water you drink, the earth that you sit upon. and um, So that was it, one of his interpretations as well is to the simplicity of life to truly enjoy that mm -hmm. and then with the bliss um, he taught that that was what Jesus mainly taught was the bliss to be blissful um, it wasn't in those days to be judgmental or to be anything else and that's the era he was born in but he really enjoyed laughter and bliss and that's exactly what a lot of his teachings were about, is finding that inner um, happiness and then radiating that without, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so, we, um, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You don't have to, to hope for an afterlife, because the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven is already here. Mm -hmm. And this is in the Bible. And, he, and so the word, the same word that is used um, for among you, because in some places it says the kingdom of heaven is among you, which would mean like around you. The same Aramaic word also means within. So they use this, usually it's interpreted both ways, within you and among you, but it's the same Aramaic word. And the word for kingdom in Aramaic is malkuta. So this has a different meaning than we might guess. Um, Malkuta means a sense of vision with empowerment, where a community receives a vision and is empowered to make changes in their inner and outer lives. So that's what kingdom means in Aramaic. <clears throat> it's a 
It's all around us right now. We just have to allow it to arise. We just have to allow it to be. It's mm. like, um, you know, forget about the differences that we see, forget about criticizing things, just allowing things to be as they are. That's how you find your kingdom of heaven. And we all have glimpses of this. We all glimpse, we've all experienced it for moments at a time. I know, I know everyone in this room has, because I've heard you share about it. So we just have to extend those moments so they last longer, so that we can share it with others. Because being in the presence of someone else who's experiencing heaven, you, the other person can feel it too. Mm. Right? So we get to share that with other people. That's the exciting part. So in Aramaic, they don't separate heaven from earth. It's all connected. Um, that was an inadequate translation. You know, the Greek philosopher Plato was the one who divided heaven and earth, really. He wrote about that as a separate thing. and People sort of started believing that. <clears throat> so in, in the book, The Hidden Gospel, in the Gospel of Thomas, it says, when you make the two one, and when you make the inner as the outer, and you make the outer as the inner, and the above as the below, then you will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's from the Bible. I thought that was beautiful. So, <clears throat> Neil Douglas Cox uses the word God quite a bit, but he prefers the word unity instead of the word God. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Unity is the name of our group. Yeah. So it's when you say, oh, I'm going to unity today, you can think about you're going to be with God. Mm -hmm. Which, we're always with God, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he uses the word unity instead of God a lot interchangeably. And he also uses um, divine, the divine, the sacred one, or just the one. There's so many names for God. I wrote a, you remember I wrote, sang a song once, all the lyrics were just different names for God. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We already talked about Ruha and the different meanings, spirit, wind, air, and breath are different ways you can translate that word. So you can do a chant when you're at home if you want to meditate or chant. You could just use this one word, and you could visualize these four other words in meditation. And you could chant Ruha, Ruha, and four times. The first time, think of spirit. The second time, think of wind. The third time, think of the air in the room. The fourth time, be aware of your breath. Although you may want to start with the breath. But it's a circle, so next time around you're starting with breath. So I would say that would be a good word to, to chant with, or to meditate. I like to chant and meditate at the same time. So, because it helps to clear my thoughts when I'm chanting and focusing on one word or four words, I'm able to sort of clear out all the other clutter that might be going on, the other thoughts that might be rustling through my brain. They just kind of go in the background for a little while, give my brain a rest. So that's why I love to, and with adding a drum makes it even more powerful for me, because I can feel the vibration through my body, I can feel my body vibrating. So the combination of singing and drumming, and that's why I started out talking about dances of universal peace, because there's the drumming, the guitar, the singing, the movement. They do other dances too, Some, sometimes, there's different movements where everybody leans forward like this in a circle and everybody stands up and they might go like this. So these are body prayers that Neil Douglas Klotz teaches at his workshops. So everybody's doing it in unison. It's very, you can imagine it's very powerful. So he calls them body prayers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he started, um, Neil Douglas class started teaching in the 1960s. Um, 
that's when the, the dances, of, at least that's when the dances of universal peace <coughs> sort of started getting going anyway, late 60s, I think. Um, and it started with Sufi teacher and Zen master Samuel Lewis. He was, the, his name is here. He started the dances of universal peace. And he also started studying Aramaic. Um, he's the one that kind of got Neil Douglas. Potts was reading the notes and the research of Samuel. And he kind of took it a step further. And he organized it and typed it up into the computer and um, learned how to say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, which is something Samuel Lewis always wanted to do, but he never, he said he wanted to be able to say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, but he didn't actually accomplish that goal. So Neil Douglas Potts kind of continued on with what his mission was. So I thought that, I saw that in a YouTube video, that story. So it's, it was interesting to hear that, to hear Neil Douglas Cox sharing that story himself on the video. So go to YouTube, check it out. Um, what else? So I think um, in, before I sing the uh, Abundamash Maya song that I mentioned earlier, that I learned at Circle, that was written by Neil Douglas Klotz. I'm going to sing that in a second with the drum. Um, before I do that, I just want to say that uh, if there's any musicians out there or watching this video that Vera's making, please come and be uh, share your music, whether you're a drummer or a singer or whatever instrument you play. I would love for more musicians to come and join me on Sundays here mm -hmm. and share your music because so far it's been mostly me and I'm ready to share that, that opportunity with others. So if you just want to share one song, if you know somebody, if your brother-in-law can play guitar, ask him if he wants to share his talent. There's a lot of guitar players who just play in their, in their home and they never go out because they think they're not good enough. Well, I'll tell you, that's not true because you guys have let me play. And you didn't let me sit home and think I wasn't good enough. So thank you for that. <laughs> I could have. I very easily could have done that. So I hope I inspire others to step up and step out and share your talents, whatever they are. Be a speaker here at Unity, like I am doing today. Any one of you here could do it if you really wanted to. Could be a speaker here. We have openings. So that's the wonderful thing about this group is that we support each other. We share each other's wisdom. You know, we respect each other. And it's, it's like a circle, you know, like I, I put hours into preparing for today, but I'm going to get, receive so much love and respect in, in return. And so I can sh continue to share that energy with whoever I come across my path. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, and I often yes. find that these actually continue throughout the whole week, like a theme, like what this song is, and I can sing it to myself, or when I need wisdom, or I need guidance, and, and also to be able to serve for others in service. So this is like, not just for today, but it'll, it'll be a theme for the entire week, which is beautiful, mm -hmm. to have something to um, follow and yes. subscribe to. Exactly. So I'm going to undo my steps so I can stand up. Uh, any other comments or questions about today's talk? You can do that now. Very, very good. Yeah. We're looking to our senior You're welcome. Oh, you inspire me to, <coughs> to learn. You know, I did all these things I'm sharing, I didn't know before. So I know now. So you inspire me to learn more. So, like the amount of radiance and love coming off of you is just like a yeah. What's that? The amount of love and radiance coming off of you is like astounding. <laughs> the amount of love and radiance coming off of me? Like with from within you. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's just a good like, compliment. Like peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. It comes off of everyone. It's just that everybody, everybody has it. Some people put little curtains around. You know, you have curtains mm -hmm. on your windows mm -hmm. at home. Some yeah. people are putting curtains around their aura. I don't know why. They're, keeping, they're, they're afraid to share it. Mm -hmm. They're keeping it here mm -hmm. instead of letting it just expand. Mm -hmm. 
or it's so bright it's so bright within them and they may have had a glimpse and they're afraid mm -hmm. to see it again they're blinded by the light mm -hmm. it's like Moses in the Old Testament when he came down from the mountain or I remember something there about being so bright the light that he radiated and they couldn't look at him mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point a lot of times we're overwhelmed by our power mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. In response, instead of releasing it, we more like, no, like, no, we don't. I'm not that powerful. Don't look at me. You know. So I encourage you all to let your light shine. Let it go. Let it shine. There's no reason to hold it back. And we're used to darkness, you know. We're used to many of us, myself included. Uh, we're taught and image darkness more. So we're kind of used to darkness and hiding in the darkness or, mm -hmm. you know, low lights or being in a closet. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're kind I of... I was literally uh, I was right. in the closet for years before I came out as uh, someone that wanted to marry a woman. Right. And I'll say, I don't like to label myself as gay, lesbian, bi. It's too boxy for me. I'm just someone who decided to marry a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the other thing about the light in the dark is that, of course, when you're in the dark, you think of rest, you think of napping, you think mm. of siesta. Mm. And when you're in the light, you have, you have energy, you are up, you are about. Yeah. And so when people don't have the energy, they don't shine their light as well, or they lack a certain understanding of it. So I think there's, they feel safe in the dark sometimes. Mm. And mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. It yeah. just reminds me just that simple little saying that children song, this little light of mine, I, mm. I was just yeah. 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 sometimes they go, yeah, mm -hmm. there's something, yeah, yeah, yeah that sums it up. Mm -hmm. Except, that, yeah. except sure. that with everything having its own dynamic and diversity, mm -hmm. and the dark is really where we dream and create mm -hmm. much more in the light when we're amused and distracted by the things that we see. Mm -hmm. So we really need to respect and embrace that darkness because mm -hmm. without it we wouldn't have much of anything that we feel like we enjoy. It really is, is manifested quite often mm -hmm. in that darker mm -hmm. space. And I also think daydreaming, when I was younger, you know, that was something that you didn't do, wherever you are. Oh, you, you know, stop daydreaming, or, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have you not face the window, or whatever. And that could be for any place that you're at, whether it's work or school or wherever. And I think we have to get back to learning how to daydream, because mm -hmm. it's very productive, actually, to take a few minutes and uh, take some time off to actually... Um, think about what would you like today? What What is one of your greater dreams or aspirations? And enjoy that for a few minutes every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this last song, um, it looks like it's pronounced Avon, but the beat is silent, so it's Avon. And the Bashmaya. Alaha, Allah, Ilat is four different languages of how to say God or God, Goddess in the case of. The old Canaanite goddess is Elat. So the lyrics are Alaha, Allah, Lohi, Elat. And so I'll chant it and you can sing along because it repeats, so you'll get the hang of it. And then I'll sing Avunda Mashmaya four times. And then it repeats. So, which means birther or divine parent was another way that you can translate it instead of divine mother, it's divine parent of the cosmos, it's like of the universe. The Bashmaya is creator of all that moves in light, is one possible. There's a lot of ways you can translate it, but that's one possible way. So, okay, we're gonna sing now.
Thank you. It's great. So now we'll do our love offering. So we'll say the love offering. Yeah, hold on. Hold oh, on. hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So you can get your love offering ready and hold it in your hand as we get ready to say the prayer. 